Okay, here we go. Look, first work, something you've got to practice doing. Again, because you're not going to be picking up your test, looking at a problem and saying, oh, I've seen this one before, here's what I do. You're not going to do that. In fact, if you do it, you're probably going to get trapped because something will be different. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, watch out. Um, famous line, you know. Please. Why don't we cover all the different ways the graphs can look so that we don't get trapped? That's rough. Well, all the different ways. So not all the different ways, but enough ways that we, to the point where we wouldn't get trapped off of a repeat question. Um, that's hard for me to be fair because I, I can't even always predict what they'll do. Okay. So what I do to keep you out of the traps is I teach you to go very slow. I teach you to make sure you understand thoroughly the idea and that you don't guess. You just, you, like you're, like here's what I do. I read slow, it says the graph of a twice differentiable function if I stop. And I have to process what that means. Okay, I know what graph means. Okay, right there, I remember, because I've memorized what it means, you need to memorize it as well. It simply means that this function f, if you choose, you can find the slope at every point. And then if you take all those slopes and you plot them as y coordinates on a graph of f prime, you'll get a different picture. But hey, you'd be able to find all the slopes on f prime also. That's what twice differentiable means. It means f prime has no missing y coordinates, f double prime has no missing y coordinates. I have a question related yeah, to the, um, the one we just did. If f has an undefined slope critical point, what happens on f prime? That means on f prime there would be a y coordinate that is not plottable. Okay, so out there. Whether it's a jump or a removable or a vertical asymptote, I don't know. Okay. Depends on the situation. But it's going to be a place where there won't be a y coordinate. Good enough? Two more. Okay, anybody have a question about what twice differential means? Thumbs up is good. Two for Jesse. Lydia, question? Um, I don't really understand what it means. Like, I get, I get it because I understand the definition of differentiable, but I don't understand like, the twice part of it. Let me show a different picture to see if it helps. Two more for Olivia. So, um, on a couple of previous packets, we've been using this picture. Um, the blue function is essentially what we might call f, although we wouldn't have to. We could call it f prime. It doesn't matter. Okay, hands up the whole room. Follow f, the blue, and raise your hand if you can answer this. Does it appear that we could find the slope at every point on blue, yes or no? Hands up. Austin. Yes. I'm going to agree. Point. If you look at me, if you took all of those numbers, the slopes, and you plot them, they become the orange graph. That's what the orange graph is. Because remember, now see, you're seeing it now. See, you're seeing it. Look here, Jesse, look, 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 watch. No, no, that's, look, look. <laughs> that's what my part one. Look, you are we'll seeing. see it before me, but I don't. Look, look, look. Not necessarily, but, but that's the key to this class. Like you understand the idea, then applying it is like infinitely easier. When you don't understand it, it's super frustrating. So look here, Jesse, do your best. These go by 20s, 20, 40, 60, right? Okay, so what's the y coordinate? Kind of an estimate. Let's do an easy one. What's the y coordinate right there? Negative six. Negative six. Okay. Um, the x coordinate's about negative one point three. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is f prime, and we would write f prime of negative one point three is equal to negative sixty. Does anyone have any question about that thing alone? Are we good? Okay. This means something on the graph of f. Who knows? Hands up. 
This is the core, one of the core ideas of the whole year. And we've been talking about it all day today, just trying to get you to see it in different ways. What does this mean, Tucker, on the graph of F? Okay, this is a bit of like an educated guess. You're good. Does it mean that x equals negative 1.3 for the graph of x? Does that mean it has a slope of negative 60? That's exactly what it means. Exactly. How many do that? Point to for Tucker. So I go up here. Look, I go straight up. Okay, x is your locator. It's like telling you where to look. Just in case it's time, but so I go straight up. That's slope right there. So the tangent slope of f at x equal 1.3, negative 1.3 is negative 60. Like literally, the way we plotted all of the orange dots is we went and calculated every slope on the blue. And every time we calculated a slope on the blue, we made an orange dot. In okay, unit <laughs> two, I show you an extremely rapid way to accomplish that. Okay? But that's what we did. Did that make sense? Yeah. Two more. Um, so back to Olivia's question. So the blue is once differentiable because I can go to every point on the blue and I can find the slope of the blue. I take all those numbers, again, trying to train you all to look at a graph and not see curves, but see numbers. I take all those numbers and I plot the orange. Okay, hands up. Can I go to every point on the orange and calculate a slope? So, oh. she says yes, who agrees? Two points, three for hope. So that means the orange is also differentiable. And that means the blue is twice differentiable. Because I did it once to the blue, got the result of the orange, did it again, and got the red. And there's no missing points anywhere. There's no missing spots. Does this mean that you can make it a, a, a triple prime? Thrice differentiable, yes. Okay. Or go on forever. Some uh, functions stop, like they end. Others go on forever. Well, how, how do they end? Um, I think I can think of an example. Um, back to here. Come on, brain. Okay, we got everybody to answer it. Look here, look at this one. Raise your hand, please. Is this function once differentiable? Meaning everywhere, hands up. Meaning, can you find the slope at every point on that function? Olivia? No. She says no, who agrees? Point two for Olivia. Can't, right? So when you go plot the f prime, there will be missing points. As soon as you have a missing point, you can't find a slope where there's nothing there to find a slope at. So this one ends. It's not even once differentiable. And we could come up with others that are like once differentiable, but not twice. That would take me a minute to think through. Can I ask you to give me like one or two sentences of the big idea of this assignment? Um, there is no sink. You're doing great. Two points for asking. Look, look, look. That is part of the challenge, is this is your first time using real AP problems. There isn't one big idea. I've kind of tried to pick problems that kind of threw in something we haven't talked a lot about, um, but the ideas are somewhat multiple. And there are some things that pull on previous knowledge, like the AP test will do as well. So again, don't get frustrated with it. It doesn't make sense, just move on to the next problem. They're not in order of difficulty. They're just 32 random problems. So we're not focusing on? We're not focusing on, you no. Know, um, and I've got to get you used to that idea, because the test is like that. It's not old-fashioned, you know, math where it's like, hey, do this, and I will practice 60 of them. Yeah. Two points. Everybody OK? Go back to here. Uh, part of the reason that it feels a little bit all over the place, Jesse, is I really hate telling students, oh, that's a great question, but we're not going to answer that now. <laughs> Like, I feel like if it's something that really, really is a part of what we're doing, I want to address it as best I can. Because I feel like your understanding will just get better and better. And I've seen it happen for 16 years. Okay. Please. How could you... Don't stop asking. Thanks. How could you have a line that's differentiable, but then, like, the prime of it is not? I like a nice smooth curve. 
you can smooth. Well, leave that one alone. Let's keep going. Uh, back to that <laughs> other more. graph, just real fast, because I was wondering, would you be able to take like the, um, not that one, the the one with like the blue, yellow, and red? Would you be able to take the blue and just like plot it at like any, like the entire graph, just move it up and down, and it still be sort of corresponding to the rest of it? Oh yeah, because if the graph shifts up or down, the slope doesn't change. So I can make that blue anywhere I want, the orange is exactly the same. Okay. Yep, to point. Yeah, little ones. Oh, actually, wait, never mind. Yeah. You're good. Right. Let's go back to here so we finish for the bell. <laughs> um, look, again, a warning to everyone. You're not supposed to go home and, like, pound your head to get through the assignment. You're supposed to do your best. You're like, that was not making sense. Like, I can get part of it, not all of it. Just move on. Then you come back and talk about it. Okay. Uh, look. I run this class differently than most math teachers, meaning that if I see you coming a lot and you're just talking with me all the time and I, and I can tell you're making progress, I'm very patient on the homework. Very patient, okay? My most favorite, you know, very, like, I'm sorry, I have hundreds of favorite students. <laughs> it's hard for me to really pick and choose. But she's a favorite, Amanda Lindstrom. She was always behind, like four assignments. Like, but she was here every day working on it for an hour and a half after school and it took her a long time like she would talk and she would talk and I would talk and I'm not sure I got it yet and say I gotta go Mr. Smith and I said, no worries come back tomorrow <laughs> she got a four on the AP test she just hang in there is there a chance that you could spend the next period in the beginning and have like a question or you know talk about some questions um that one's hard just because we always have this pace we have to keep but I will do my best so, yeah I am envious of schools where this class is held every single day. Yeah. I don't know if I can do that. Well, there's that. Yeah. Okay. Hey. You're the reason why, Michael. Look, 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 look up, look up, look up. Um, but I am trying my hardest to be here at 6.45 in the morning. Yesterday I stayed with students clear to like 4.30. Um, no lie, no lie. Okay. Um, because I want to help. I can't do that every single day necessarily, but I will fight to do it as much as I can, okay? Because uh, I see no way to learn it unless we just spend time with it. Like, there isn't a quick way. Um, my son-in-law is a good example of that. He took AP Calculus in high school, got an A every single term. He did all the homework, got really good test scores, got this on the AP test. Okay, he's a smart guy. Like, he's... Work, he's making like 130,000 a year, software engineer, he's smart. But the teacher took the wrong approach <laughs> and led him down this false path, like, well, if you do all these things, you'll do well on the test. No. So I'm, I don't do that. <laughs> like, I'm going to fight and fight for you to make sense of it, because I have a great feel for what they're going to test you on. And once I can tell your understanding, then you'll be fine. Okay? We'll practice to verify it. Good luck. Let me all wound up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So as I read the problem, look here, look. This clue is rarely important. I've learned from experience that it is rarely needed. It's often there because mathematically, if they don't say it, the rest of the problem has some invalidness to it, okay? But I sometimes use it, sometimes don't. So I keep reading. So this is F. The biggest mistake people make is when they read the words twice differentiable, they think that's F double prime. That's no. It's not. It's just F, twice differential F, okay? Which of the following is true? Here's a trick, okay? I've learned this from experience. They have, over the years, often had answers that look like this. Like this whole less than thing, this big matrix. Okay, when they do that, I've never seen a case where the bottom one wasn't negative, the middle one wasn't zero, and the top one wasn't positive. Now maybe they'll get creative and one of them will be you know, ne very negative, the next one will be just a less, little less negative, and the third one is zero, but they haven't yet. So I'm always gonna start with the assumption that, hey, negative, zero, positive. I just go find values. So raise your hand, please. We've got two minutes. Right there, because we're looking at one everywhere. That's the graph of f. So I should be able to write f of one equals, and you all raise your hand and tell me what goes in the box. There we go. 
M O N. Zero. How many new? Point two for M O N. So right away, ah, fifty percent chance. We've got two of them left. <laughs> Questions? How'd you get that? Yeah. So, part from experience, I've learned that when they give you this kind of a matrix, the middle item is always been zero. Yeah. Okay. So we saw that f of one. Oh, okay. No, good question, Michael. Oh. F of one is zero. Cool. Everybody good? Okay. Yes. Okay. Now keep going. Look at me. This is the graph of F. F prime represents the tangent slope of F. So right here, hands up. All you got to know is if that slope is positive, negative, or zero. Hands up. Is that slope positive, negative, or zero? Oh, O agrees. Yeah. Point, two for O. So that's this one. Don't leave. Right here. So this is the answer. Great. Wait, actually? Actually. It just, you have to knock it out like that. The rest of it, hey, the last one's easy. Look at me, look, look. Say it out loud as a class. Is this, now, if you listen carefully to my speech, you'll notice I never say this. I always say F, F prime, or F double prime. I never say the graph. It's too generic. I say, this is the graph of F. Is this graph concave up or concave down? Say it. Concave, concave, concave down. down. Danny's chart says, if F is concave down, all values of F double prime are negative. Good job, you guys. Good work. What the heck? Thanks, Mr. Smith. You're welcome. Well done. Stop the video.